All right. So uh, Tanya Tyler with Counter Trade, we're the ones that put together the response, and uh, iPro is the solution that we've presented, and CAD is uh, the manufacturer rep for, for this solution. We'll go over everything. You guys remember me from last week? Right? Yep. Here we are. We've got one extra person here, Jamie. She's Hi. our. She's my. She's our rep for Colorado, so it's extra coverage in that. She's local. I cover six states, so she goes down in Denver, and so she's she's here to help Tanya and help out on that aspect of it too. So, I'm not going to kill you. Like I said, remember I told you I hate PowerPoints. <laughs> I'm just going to show a few slides, and then we'll jump into it and, and go from there. So. IPRO is us, and then you say, okay, where, I'm just going to show you a little brief history why, you know, you hear Panasonic, IPRO, I'll, I'll always make that mistake, I always say Panasonic because I've been doing Panasonic for 20 years, so it's bred in my brain, so this is just a little video and let you know kind of our legacy. was established in 2019. Built on a legacy of over 60 years of innovation with Panasonic, the history of iPro dates back to the introduction of its first security camera in 1957. In 2020, iPro was the first in the industry to introduce an Edge AI-enabled camera. iPro has developed competency in six core technologies, which meet the diverse needs of our customers iPro products are world-renowned for being reliable, and this is our foundational core competency. We are driving growth by developing cutting-edge AI technologies within an open platform framework, partnering with the best vendors to ensure our products meet and anticipate customer needs. Today, society faces invisible cybersecurity threats iPro is meeting these challenges and also providing security products that can be easily implemented, operated, and maintained by everyone. iPro is your trusted next generation partner in AI cybersecurity edge computing devices. We engineer systems that extend human capabilities with analytics driven technology. We will be your trusted partner with the same hopes and goals as frontline workers to create a safer and more peaceful world together. This was made just for you guys, by the way. <laughs> so that kind of tells you where iPro has been in the industry. I mean, we've been in the industry a really long time, but going back into the Panasonic day, there was a lot of firsts that you see on there. We came up with the first surveillance camera, CCD camera, and then you know a lot of other firsts through that legacy. And that whole legacy carries on today within us and our, in our products, so. Oh, well, iPro was a step. Don't need to do that. So why iPro, like they said in the video, video analytics, we have all of our analytics are edge, on the edge. So we do everything on the edge. And what that does for you guys, you don't have to have a BV server and scrubbing the video. That also gives you real time notifications. You're getting it in real time and not after the fact of it going through and being scrubbed. Um, so we have a bunch of those, and I'll show you all that kind of stuff here in a bit. Uh, the nice thing about our platform is it is very low cost, probably the lowest cost on, on the market today. So no licensing, so using our camera and our, our platform, it's all bundled together, no license, and no reoccurring fees. Okay? Uh, storage, um, our cameras are very clean and on the network, and we're able to reduce that storage by, uh, they say up to 70%, it's about like up to 50%. And then just make, we made it easy to use. So if it's not easy and it, it's complicated to try and find something and all that stuff, nobody's gonna use it, they're gonna hate it, and they're gonna like, ah, let's get rid of this stuff. So we've done some other stuff on our cameras that we make things real easy to do. But like it says, we have cameras, we have our active guard, which is our analytical search that allows you to use our cameras in that there. Then we integrate into access control like we talked about last week. Then we have plugins also for transportation, so like cameras on a bus and all that stuff. And I love live tracking of the bus all on the same platform and LPR and there's a few others there. Um, so like this video here, this is what I'm talking about. This is our camera, this is a competitor camera. This is on the network, very clean on the network. And when you get that inrush, you know, when the bell rings and all the kids go in, you get this big fluxiness. If you have this bounce on your network, 
you can actually start losing packets with a whole bunch of them because you start hitting them with a the threshold. So getting a little tacky, but anyway. We have 4K when you have a whole plethora of cameras. Um, we also do very well in low light. You know, I can tell this guy has a blue jacket on compared to is that gray or not. Uh, we test all of our cameras by impact. We'll do impact testing and all that kind of stuff. I know we're talking about PMS. But we'll get into that. This is kind of a cool video. So we build these to take that impact so you, you're not having the problem. We say a vandal resistant camera, and we mean that through camera, not dome. So. <coughs> so the VMS, it has been geared around the K through 12 business, around, around your guys' core. And that's kind of how the platform has gone, is to make it easy and easy, everything under one, one pane of glass. I'm just going to skip through here. Uh, we'll talk about that. So like I said, one pane of glass. I can do facial recognition, I can do LPR. I, can, I have a health monitoring software, body-worn cameras. We have our own body-worn cameras. We can come in here, access control. All this, man, is all pulled in through, through our VMS. Uh, we also have a video wall platform, too, that we can actually throw the cameras up live on the video wall if you have a sock, <coughs> if you want to do it that way. And like I said, if you have questions, please just throw them up because I don't want to be the one that went talking. <laughs> or Jamie's going to have to get up here and talk. <laughs> so this is how we stock with our platform. Like I said, we have two different ways. So other BMSs, they have a fee that you keep on paying every year. With us, that's not. Once you buy it, it's all inclusive. So even as we improve the software, that's all, all inclusive. And that. So get out of that, get out of that. And then all of our stuff is five year warranty. We were the first to five year. Other people now have kind of caught up. So we're at five years and then we make our cameras to last. So let's dive in. What's the lifespan of a camera? Huh? How, how often are you thinking, if we're looking at equipment replacement cycle, what are you thinking? Put a camera out brand new today, what am I replacing? You're going to want to replace it before it goes dead because you want higher resolution and all that stuff. So typically, our mean time to failure with our cameras is 0 .004 or something. I can't remember what it is. It's terrible. So my cycle, seven years, 10 years. I mean, I have cameras out there still running. They still run on 25 years. Sure. So. You know, it's it's all in, based on environment, but like these cameras here, they, they say in normal operation in, in conditions that it's made for seven to ten years. Yeah. Easy. Thanks. All right. <clears throat> so video insight, that's our platform. So we'll just log into the cla into the uh, client software. Let's make sure. So this is how you log in. We, we integrate with Active Directory. You can log, do all that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to remember all your questions, so we'll go through that. So here I got, I've got three servers. You can have, I just say multiple, I can log into all of them or I can just check and log into whichever one I want to. And then they will show up if you have rights in those. So I just log in. The red show that I didn't look connected to them. I'm not connected to them. We're on the right or the left, sorry. My right. <laughs> but so here's our camera tree, servers, and then you got your cameras. You can do this. And then we have global views. These are all set up so that everybody has their the global views. So you can have out, outside cameras, you can do inside, whatever you can. These are all global. Okay. And then we also have maps. So maps this is our map interface you can drop a jpeg in drop your cameras in and this is where he was saying if you remember you'll also see if there's access control access control if it's integrated those can show up on, on this also and then like you said you can click on here you get a little preview you got your functions you can actually refocus that camera from here so if it's out of focus you get the abf the auto focus and it will refocus it so you know, like if it gets dusty dirt on it, they can do a refocus. <coughs> or most times at night, but our cameras will automatically do that. So as soon as it switches to black and white, they'll switch and they'll do a refocus and automatically refocus on there. So, um, 
and then we have all these so that's the pages so I can leave that page open there so we made it like like you're in you know Google Chrome we can have multiple tabs you can have them all there I don't recommend opening up a thousand tabs but we can have all these tabs right there and then we can have all different types of views if we want in a new workspace and then we can save your own custom workspace so we allow the user to make their own workspace and when they log in it'll show there and then you can also have it custom log up when they log in it shows their <coughs> their custom view that they want or workspace so Tad, when you're going through all this so if we're looking at the different servers that you log in I assume that you're talking about one at every school yes so we do something like that if we want to manage it centrally uh, what is we can do that too so I can have one that manage central and then one at every location is that, yeah, is that or a you can do, I'm sorry go ahead you can do you can do well this you can have all your so we can have all your servers distributed just distributed is much more better you know because in case of network goes down in between you know you don't like you were talking earlier you don't have the fiber control between school to school to school if that goes down and you're doing a central recording you lose that so distributed i call it distributed processing you get a lot more processing everything being out there you know and there now you can centralize that we can centralize it and do everything all in one like uh, Denver Public Schools is doing that and they're running them up on VMs you can do VMs <coughs> but there is so if you run up a spin up a VM there is a license for the software it's a one time for that one VM and then one and then one and one so that's kind of how that works that answer your question yep. oh absolutely okay. just, yeah, I was just I was curious there so yeah I mean <clears throat> some people like central centralizing it and making it and it's good I mean all your servers can be there it's all on how you want to do it. I mean, it's very, very versatile on that aspect of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we've really done um, over over the years is you saw us. We're we're now FIPS two level three compliant, which I do believe we're the only manufacturer right now. I haven't seen one under other people became FIPS three level three compliant, which is a security thing. And then <coughs> we're also very. We also offer a signature certificate that comes through and it will verify and say yes you're okay or you're this and it's a global sign you know global cert you see we use and partner with and that allows so that data is encrypted and nobody can get in you know stops kids from snooping and if they get in on the network so. so it's real simple I can I can either click on a camera I can just click and see the camera or if I know the name of the camera I can type it in. Let's just go 857. So if I know the model or the name of the camera I'm looking at, I can type that in and search it, pull them up, clear that out. So, and what you're seeing here, so this is our multi sensor that they've got. That camera right there is on the building. And what you're doing is seeing the camera is processing these. I can turn these blue boxes off. These are just on for demo. So this is saying this is a vehicle, and that the green is direction. So it's stable. It's not moving anywhere. So the green is there. <coughs> and you can turn that off and on just by hitting that, so you don't see all that stuff. But it's good to see. You know, you can see that the camera is actually processing that, and it's sending it back to our AI software that resides on the same server. So. AI, that's the nice thing is we can put it all on the same server. Now, once you hit a certain threshold, then we'll need a separate server for the AI, but that's all inclusive. So all of our analytics on our cameras and, and what we do is all included. So all the analytics that I'm gonna show you are free. There is one that is a charge and it's the LPR, but uh, like this just happened, right? <laughs> Which is great. So. We have an LPR camera popped up. We have this set up as an event. So if this person comes in, pops up the camera, we clip that plate. We can actually save that license plate. <coughs> so it's a great demo that does this all the time. <coughs> so I can come in here and I can view the video of that event. I can see it and I can do what I want to do here. So hopefully the time zone's on. Houston's off. Yeah, that's what it is. But anyways. So because I'm an hour off, that time zone is screwing that up there. But I can save this plate. I can go through it. I can put in the information. 
edit it. I can put a group. I can also put a threat uh, threat level on it. So that's what this is. This this one comes in. We we get the pop up. We get the alert. Um, that aspect of it. So going on it live monitoring. I can do. That's live monitoring. I can close these out. I can click on the one server and I can pull all the cameras up at that one building. And then down here at the bottom, because there's more than 16 cameras on there, I can click on the bottom down here and see the other ones. I can actually put that in a, a sequence. So it'll switch between the two, back and forth. And then I can stop that. And then what we've also done is if I'm watching this, I can click this little click button down here and I can force record in this screen here. So it's gonna force recording this, this screen. So like if an event's happening, I mean, I'm already recording, right? But if I'm, I want this and I want this view to be recorded, I can click that. And then as soon as I stop, let's go, do you wanna create this clip? And you can say, yes, we can export that. We can say, combine it into a single file, multiplex, or we can separate it out as individual cameras. So as you see, I had 16. I just want to see all 16 on one multiplex. I can export that as an AVI, an executable, which will play in our software on our, there, or an MPEG. I can include audio if there was audio. Show the timestamp, include a watermark, and then also force compatibility, which that means anybody will be able to open that up. If I export that as an AVI, I can do that with that watermark done, so? Yes. Okay. Yep. So all I do is I hit export, it's gonna export that. I don't know how long you think that is gonna be. But it puts it in here, it's gonna download it to my desktop. And I can go on and do whatever I'm gonna do. And What's I can the pixelation on that one camera. The that screen. right here? Yeah. That is our we have told that camera we want to blur this out because there's sensitive information there, or I don't you know, don't wanna zoom into the neighbor's window. Right. And so we can do that on all our cameras. So that's the live view of that? Yep. And then all I do is just double click on that. And then so if I do zoom in more, it doesn't matter what I do, it's all pixelated. Okay. And then sometimes you can actually have that set on a threshold too. So if you're all the way back, you can still see it. So it'll be like a regular building. <clears throat> and then as soon as you zoom in, then it blurs out also. So we can do both. So, and then just like I did there, I double clicked on it. I double click again and I go back to my view. So if I see something I want to see like this camera over here, I can see this, and I can do whatever I want to do. I can digitally zoom in, draw a box. So down here, wherever it is, on it, there's a little box there. So I drew an imaginary box when I drew a little imaginary. And if I draw it backwards, it zooms back out. Um, the best way to just show that is better on the PTZ. So it's the same thing that I did here. I draw a box like this, camera will move in, and then if I want to zoom back out, I go backwards like that. So I should be using my mouse. I'm still using my mouse. <laughs> so it's very easy to operate. So if you have a mouse and then if I click, I can just click wherever and it's going to center wherever I put that at on a pan tilt zoom. You guys don't use PTCs? We don't. I try to stay away from them. I mean, sitting in traffic, they love them because they like to zoom down and all that stuff. But so, and that's the same thing on a fixed camera. You know, you can do that same thing on a fixed camera, you know. So we pull it up, we can digitally zoom, zoom in, zoom out. Oops. And then we can force that. Let's see where we're at in progress here. Completed that. Okay. So we can play that, we do all that. Um, so let's say we're on a camera here. It's So for me to be able to do playback, I just click on the little icon down here that's playback. Then you have your time bar where I can actually search. And the blue is always recording. And I can scrub that video by just you know moving it back and forth if I wanted to, to the dates, or I can come over if I know the time. I can select the dates. The red is recorded video. Pretty simple, standard. <clears throat> I am gonna log into my house just because I like how I have mine set up. They don't show 
So I can record always, and then I can show you actually uh, events that happen on there. So what I mean by that is like, okay, red, you, you know, blue, you don't see any events. It's just all solid there. So we have a little thing that I call, we call it, um, I call it the motion ticker or the event ticker. And you can actually see those events clicking on it. So we'll just click on the house. So come down here. <clears throat> So you see the little red marks down here on the bottom? Mm -hmm. Those are just the, they are the, uh, and I can expand this, make it a little bigger. So those are motion events, those are motion events. Then I can turn on my analytic bar, and this is showing what my analytic events. So there's an analytic event that happened in the green. So the red is actually motion event, and then the greens are actually, with this older camera, it's called VCA event, so it's like cross line or Stupid thing. So cross line detection, intruder, all that, all that on this older camera. On the newer ones, you would have AI. Of, so like this camera here, <clears throat> we have the same thing. You can see that we have. Where'd they go? Yeah, see, went away on me. <laughs> anyway, so you can see that you'd be able to see the AI events on there. I don't know why. Too fast on my clicking. Sorry. So, so that's fast. You know, imp, you know, you can scrub video that way. Um, playback, live monitoring, all that stuff. I can also send that view. So if I want to take this picture, I can go. I can send this to any user that's on here and send a memo and say, "Hey, look at this," and then that'll go and it'll be a pop up. It'll be a pop up on that person. You know, say here you want to view this camera so you can actually send those out if there's an event you can push that out to your users if you want to um, questions so I'm going to jump into how I'd like to search for video you know the whole boring way of dragging the bar or going to the date and the time pretty boring I love using our AI because it's much faster I can get there fast I can do people I can do vehicle search LPR anything of that so like our our analytics we have over a hundred attributes that you can search okay so this is brand new this detective thing is so brand new like I said I don't I'm trying to figure this one out we haven't had a little bit of training on the detective thing but anyway you'd be able to load a, a picture in here and then it would analyze that and then it would take those attributes and apply it to the search so anything like if it was a male female age group or child you can actually search for so you can do male we can do hair short hair color of hair um, i like to do a broad search but anyway i can come in here and i can click and do this search by shirt go white pants so you can see all the attributes that we can search by whoops and then it puts them over here on the in here as I click on them, it puts them in there. Uh, let me scroll down here. So we can get down to glasses, no glasses, beard, beard, mask, bag, no bag, and then even down to shoe colors and direction. So that's all in people search. So we can, we can even say, I don't care about people going this way because everybody was evacuating the building. I wanna see people going back into the building at this time. So you can actually eliminate that too. So apply those. And I hit a search and you can put your time frame in so defaults 24 hours but we can go back you know as far as we want as long as we have recorded video so on this camera we have this one thing we click on the video shows the guy he's outside we actually detected him through the glass and then it tells us what what the camera thought it was 90 percent had a hat hair color black uh, short top it was 100% on that and it throws all those there um, we have our camera information if you your map it shows you where the camera is at and then down here you can export that video too so you can right click here you can save the image or you can immediately if that's your perp or somebody that you want there you can export that clip right there immediately okay or let's just say you know what we want to broaden this search up more so let's go if we really, if we got a lot of people 
and we want to broaden it down, that's where we would say search exact traits, and that would get that would shrink that down to be much more. It's not tracking this person, but it's tracking the attributes that apply to that person. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But let's say we're going to make it a little less because we want to see more. So we just click on that. It's going to hopefully broaden that out a little bit. There we go. So this is like I said. So if I went and clicked, we caught two more of him. We got a gray shirt there, but now we got two images of that person because it was too strict in the first process. So we were able to find the perpetrator or whatever we wanted to do to get there. Questions? This is on the camera or this is? This is all done on the camera, but we're, this is all doing it through our, our VMS platform. One of, because one of the questions that we'll have, we'll have to do with, you know, this is for new schools. Mm -hmm. you know, this are applies to the two new schools, but then the retrofit would be on uh, the other schools that we've got, you know, so other nine buildings in the, in the district. Mm -hmm. So obviously we don't want to replace all that infrastructure. So yep. we so still, still, still can pull some of this off on those older cameras. Not this on those older cameras. This is strictly with, with us. Okay. okay, so any analytics that other manufacturers have, they don't. So Genetech uses our platform, Milestone uses our platform, because of, they, they, because of our attributes and how accurate we are with our cameras. So they, they have <coughs> partnered with us on that, and they actually, this looks exactly the same on either one of them. So it doesn't matter, but same plugin. it is our camera. Yeah. Because our technology is in our camera. I said it's the same plugin on either platform, it's the same plugin. Yeah. But so you have Genetech in those other buildings. So it's handwall cameras. Handwall cameras, yeah. We work, we work with thousands of cameras. We, do, we bring in any other third-party cameras. We have all those different third-party cameras, no problem. And those would be at a um, a license, one-time charge that we have. That's what we proposed was to bring all those cameras in. And then what we would do is you'd scrub off the Genetech and load the DI, and then you'd be up and running. Those are analytic cameras, of specifically, right? Hmm? These ones are yes. So like any of the, we don't have any analytic cameras right now. We don't. So if we wanted to do that, we we would have to replace those cameras with analytic. Yeah, cameras. if you wanted to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we do have a feature. I'm not a big fan of it, but we do have a there. Let's pull it up here. <clears throat> so we have down here in the um, recorded view. We call it. They call it smart search. So basically, I don't have a good v GPU which, you know, surfaces and that don't. But if you have a good video card, we call it, and we, we can give you all that what you need. But what that allows you to do is you can draw a box in an area, and then what it does, and you put your time frame in there, instead of sitting there watching the video and trying to find out what came in this area, you can run this search, and then it will just, it'll basically do a fast forward and put your events over here, I'll do a smart search. And that's on any camera that we do that through. I. I like it, but I don't like it because you got to have the GPU, you know, the, the graphics card to do it. It helps. I know, you know, instead of sitting there watching hours of video, you can sit this run and then go do other stuff if you want to. But you're not going to watch hours. You're going to maybe watch, you know, like 30 minutes. It cuts it in half. Okay. <coughs> so, and this is just, like I said, when we do an analytic search, we're selecting what cameras have that. So I have certain cameras that don't have if you see, these are the only cameras that have AI, but we have other cameras on here that don't have AI on it, so. And then if we're gonna do a face, and these analytics are included in the, in, the, in the camera, and you can pick and choose some of our cameras. So I, not that one, but this one here is a multi-sensor. I can run four different analytics on that. So I can run face, I can run vehicle, I can run people detect, and I can run AI BMD. So I could run four, or I could run four analytics on one head. That whole camera can only handle four there. So like this dome camera would be able to do two or three. So you'd be able to run AI, VMD, people. And so people. that camera is limited to four? This one is, yes. So it could be one per lens, could yes. be four on one lens, however I want to yep. divide Two it. on so this one, two on this one, or two here, one, one. Yeah. So that is limited to one. <coughs> What I find a lot is the vehicle one's really nice because of parking lots, right? Kids hanging out in the parking lot, that's where AI BMD would come in handy. Loitering after hours, you can push an alarm, push an alert. Or they come in and say, hey, I got a black stripe down my car. 
somebody hit my car, you can come in and say, okay, black car or blue, so we can come in, we can search. And you can say, okay, where were you parked? Here you are, search it, and you went that way. And I can search. The only reason I know truck and blue is we got an Amazon facility down there. <laughs> and so we hit everything blue with an Amazon truck. So I can select anything here, blue, and it shows the camera. Like it says, I was able to find it that fast, right? So that's the key of using the analytics and being on the camera, because this is real time. This is search. We have another, the other plugin is, which is guard, the active event. That's the one that if you have a monitor, they, those events will pop up there, so. Okay. And face is pretty much the same thing, except for now we're identifying people, right? So now we can do an identification. We can do a search of faces, just do a whole thing. You know, somebody says, hey, Billy came in and beat me up or something, or hero, he came in late. You know, we can find that. You can see all those. Here's Vesco, he's my inside sales guy down there in Houston. So I can capture that event really quickly. So faces, so anytime they walk in front of a camera that comes up, that camera is capturing their face. <clears throat> so there he is there I can save his face and register it if we get a good picture there we can register it it'll take put it there I can say here and then there is certain requirements if you notice we captured more than one pic picture of him coming through the video so here it is here we can say this and we can say let's go I can put in all these things here and if I have it he's an employee and if I don't want these faces to show up I want you know like all my students I have yeah, faces of it or all my employees walk in I don't want to have them show up in the face search because I don't care they're supposed to be here I can exclude them so they'll never show their face on there so it'll be an exclusion so I can do this you can actually do a mentality you know same thing with like a student if it gets expelled right and they're not supposed to be on property you can add upload their face put them in the search the watch list and when they come on property you can pop up to the to the receptionist or the principal push it out to the app out to them and they can be notified of, of that person not being on property so Questions? How are you going to get to that? Like, how you would actually set that up? Uh, just from a programming side, I don't want to stop you from what you're doing, but you know, to say, I'm going to set this to do this. To I, I'd like to see that at some point. Don't need to do it now. Just it's real simple. Just, just want to see the yeah, event. Yeah, real simple. I'm not an admin on our Houston one, but I'm an admin on my server in the house. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what I can do here is this is our our AI configuration. We can actually push these from the VMS. It'll take it a minute to, let's see, what happened here? And this is where I start doing too much. There we go. That's not the one I want. I can't remember how you get the screen to work itself in there. How do you do that? IT guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I selected my camera. The view is off, so the camera's are over here. So I selected this camera, and I have all these set up, these analytics set up in here. So I am, my wife, I am doing human, vehicle, or bicycle. So anything in that area is an intruder. Then I set up another one, my green, which is intruder. I have the red, which is loitering. So if anybody comes in here and loaders after what set time I put in there, and then I have a cross line, so I can count who's ever come across that line there, I, the cross line detection. That's the AI VMD. The analytics for the face and all that stuff, it's just, a, you just load it onto the camera. It's a like a firmware, like you're doing a firmware, we have a tool that'll do it. And it just goes on and that's it. You, you don't have to set it up. And then in the AI server software, you just go in and you search and you pull those cameras in and that's what captures it. It's kind of hard to show it remotely, but it's that, it's literally that, that simple. And then so you have 16 of those 
different zones that you can set. And that pushes them out to the cameras. And then here's your detail settings if you want to put all your loitering times and direction. And then if you get really there, you can set all your detection laps and all that stuff. And then push those out to the camera. Camera runs. So adding a camera to the system is really easy. So servers, we can come in, do a server. We'll click on mine because I have an admin, right? You can do add my camera. I can do a search, discover for cameras, or I can manually add a camera. So like I said, I can come in here, I can put whatever, and then here's our list of manufacturers that we also support all these other third-party cameras that we do, and those would require the license, one-time license for those. And then you just put that, you enable how you want to do it, how you want to record on the cameras, do that, do edge. Um, one thing I know, I remember you guys said on one of your questions is how do you enable if the network goes down? Well, if the network goes down, power goes out, you're basically screwed, right? Well, we're kind of unique. So if your network switch goes out, I have a few customers that do it. They they run a network and then they run a separate power supply, uh, 12 volts or 24, whatever the camera takes. We can run both at the same time. So we're gonna be using PoE and using 12 volts DC. And if network failure is down, we have put, put an SD card in the camera, it will apply and say, oh, I lost communication. It's gonna start recording on the SD card. When it comes back up in some said time, I don't know when it does it, the camera and the, the VMS talk and say, okay, I have video for you, and then it comes and pulls that video and puts it in the timer. Yeah. So that's one thing about being, because it's easier to back up 12 volts than it is a whole network. So that's an option that you can do. And so all of our cameras, I think 90 something percent of them, can be powered up with a separate power supply. And so a 12 volt power supply, the battery backup saves that thing there. So, but now I've got to empower all the cameras. Hmm? Now, yeah. I've got, now I've got to have a, an outlet near all the cameras to be able to plug that in. But you could just run it with your Cat5, right? Like a 12, you know, an 18 2. Yeah. Back, you know, so yeah. very simple. Sure. So, you could run an 18 2, and I think you'd have that drop at that 300 foot, you'd be fine. But I'd have to do the calculation. But yeah, it'd be like an electronics power supply. Sure. You don't have to have an outlet by every camera. Right. So that's just an extra level of security. You know, if it does go down, let's just say this goes down and you want it, but the network still stays case there. We have a failover. We can also have a failover server, and that can be a centralized one. So if any <coughs> servers fail, it goes over here. It's a, a zero. So all those cameras would then default over to the, to the failover server. And then I can also through here, what's nice also is we've made it so that I can go through and I can configure all these cameras. Um, close this up. So all these cameras, so my settings, so if I wanted to change all my cameras to H.265 instead of four, or change the recording, hold on, where's it at? change that I know I can also change it to record always so you can make all these settings down here and then push those out to the camera so if you wanted to change the frame rates right so instead of recording 30 frames you want to record 10 frames you can change that and all all in one and you can select whatever cameras you want to push those to you don't have to do it to all of them. so you don't have to go and make the changes in the camera yourself so you can do that all through here <coughs> Plugins. This is where you update and load the plugins in there, and those all will show up under here. So these are all the plugins that are in, and those can be applied to certain users or no user. You know, so if you don't want certain users to have this, they don't have to. You don't have to load that plugin on their on their 
client software. We have a web client also, which works on on all platforms. So this works on Apple or, or Mac and Windows machines. Um, let me see if I can do this. So you know, people don't have to have that thick client. What is it? Isn't it demo? So the web client looks exactly like our platform. Same thing. And they can log in. Now what you lose here is you don't get the analytical search. They can do playback and all that kind of stuff. They don't have the, the AI features because that's all done through the plugin. But I can sit here and I can look at video. I can look at multiple videos. Like it says, it looks just like our the thick client that sits on there. I can pull those up. I can pull them up single and then I can also do playback video the same way as we do, I can come over and I can select the time and date. Go to that time and date, I can export that video from here also. I can take a snapshot. I can also do bookmarks. So we did, you know, one of your things was bookmarking. So I can do bookmarks. So if this was an incident, I can add a bookmark. Or if there has been bookmarks that have been saved, I can save those on here and you, you can also send those bookmarks to people on those. So here's like all the bookmarks that we've gotten in there, tracking some, you know, whatever you want to name them, and then you can give those to people. Now those will be recorded over. They're not set to be saved. So if you need that video, this is just a temporary thing to be able to refer to it really quickly and all that stuff. We don't save bookmarks because it's not, if it's that important, you, you need to export it. So like I said, I can get to it really quickly. Like this one I think is gone, because that's way back in December. Yeah. So the most important one, I can go to this and I can play it and it takes you right to that bookmark and it shows up not there because it's past the time, but it would show, we'll just put one in real quick. So we'll add a bookmark and those will show down here that bookmark will be wherever that time frame was it puts a little yellow tab in there there it is right there so when you're looking at your video you see a yellow that's a bookmark somebody saved a bookmark so, and then you can get to that rather quickly you can also send that bookmark to people all that kind of stuff there um, recent history you can jump back 15 seconds 30 seconds all that through here by right clicking you can jump, if you have admin rights, you can jump to the properties of the camera and change the settings here. So we do uniquely is we record primary stream number one, and then we use second stream for live. But you're still, when I'm full screen, I'm still looking at stream number one. And then I can set that up if I do a four screen. So like if I pull all these up at one time, all these are now second stream. As you can tell, see how it's a little jagged? I don't need good quality to see a bunch of it. What I need good quality for is recording. So what this does is allow us to save bandwidth through the throughout the net district. So I'm not streaming a 4K at 8 meg all the way all the time and only trying to push it through that little hole. I don't need it. I don't need 4K resolution for this. So we save bandwidth on that aspect allowing us. But as soon as I click on it, the software switches to stream one, and this is what we're viewing. So that that save and also it doesn't. It saves you on workstations too. You don't want to have to have a powerful workstation for that aspect of it too. Okay. Questions? Ed, Ted, you, you were talking about the, the web 
interface through the browser. Mm -hmm. Is there a mobile app for the yes. application as well? Yes, okay. there is. Uh, data encryption to and from? What was that? Data encryption to and <coughs> from? There is encryption. I don't know what it is. Okay. You know, user password, all that stuff there. So I have, on my old laptop, I had a thing that I could share my thing on there. And that. But yes, I have, it's a VI app and it's on both Android or iOS. And then you can click and do everything on theirs. Um, so I can click, I can view video, I can play video based on your rights that you're set up on. And I can have all the camp, all the district servers all on here, or that person can have the one there. And then we do have another app. It's called the AI, the AI app, right? So it's AI Guard. So sorry. So that these two right here, the yellow and the red, are the two apps that we use. And the red one is the one for the events for the okay. analytics. So that will be able to push. You can also do searching, just like what I did there. You can actually do that on an Apple device or Android device also. Okay. I don't want to go backwards to last week at all, but I kind of do because how it integrates with door access matters. So with those apps you just showed right there, that's for the video. Do I have another app then that I would have for door access? No, well, okay, and you saw the green one in the middle, right? That is, remember we talked about that, you have to have an SSL yeah. for that. So yes, you can do that through here, but also through the VI app. So what I'll show you, don't judge my garage. Looks clear to mine. And through here, so I have on the VI app, I have a door app. So if it's integrated, I can hit this door. So there's the door. And I can go admit. Let's see if it works today. It's still right in here. Not good. Not good service down here. <laughs> But I can do the entry right here, hit admit, and it will open up the door. And that's, so you can do all that stuff. And then you'll see the last entry too on those doors. So if you wanted to do that, that's the integration with VI. On the, I don't have an SSL set up on there, but on the access control, and you'd have the same thing. And if you have admin rights, you could add somebody into there, all that. But with the VI one, you can just see the door and see who's there. And if you needed to open it, or, um, you know, I can also, if it was an emergency, I could put, you know, the lockdown feature here. If you have lockdown feature, you could be able to do the lockdown feature. So, does that make sense? Did that answer your question? Good. Okay. Yeah, the service down here is not, not getting good. And you can do that from here too. So, here's the access. I think we showed this to you guys just last time. So we have the doors, you can have all doors or special doors. I can see that door and I can lock it, lock down. So like the receptionist or something, they get in the work, they can lock the whole facility down with that just one button. Or even just a, you don't even have to have this. If you had an emergency press button somewhere, it could be set up as that. So like it says, I can admit and let them in. And that's, that's what's nice about the front like the lobby, you know, we can let somebody in through there, through the VI, and you can see that right here too. You can do that same thing through here on the maps, on the map view, so. Okay. Did I cover everything on that side? So the license plate recognition, we showed that. But we can also do, the, with the plugin, we have the plugin, I can do searches. I can do a full search. I'm just gonna run a real quick report. So here, we pull this car here, pulls the plate in. What's kind of nice is we also pull the information that we know it was a Honda Accord and it was white. So you can also search by that model, name, color. So you can put in Ford and it will show you only all the Ford plates, you know, that comes in there. So with this, this is a third party we partnered with a, another manufacturer, but the application runs on our camera, and they did, that's the one license that is paid, and that application loads right onto the camera. So I can save that plate, and I can do all that, and then I have also the the event monitoring one. So basically, if I want to sit here and watch this boring thing, I would see the plates come in as they come in. They would populate. Um, 
about that one per minute. So we have a thing called Open Maps, which works really well for you, like a big school district or school district because you've got multiple buildings, right? So having maps, okay, which one do I go to? Which one do I go to? So we have this thing called, it's called Open Maps. It does take a minute to load just because it is a live application. And what we do is um, I have a map and then I can drill in. So I can be all the way out and like if I have all these in, in Weld County, I can go in, I can see all my outside cameras, then I hyperlink and then pull up my maps on for the cameras on the inside. So it's, it's really nice. I can type in an address and it'll just take me right there. So it's, it's an open, called live mapping is what they call it. And it does, like I said, it does do GPS takes a little bit, there it is. So I have all these alarms that come in, and that one. So I have events sitting at my house, like, you know, audio, all that kind of stuff. So that's where I get all these events. I got one camera where the wind hits and the birds and everybody that. But anyway, I'll get rid of that. Like I said, my surface doesn't have the best application. But so here it is, this is my house, so I can see those. And as I hold that there, there, but if I zoom out, I can go down to Houston. This here. And they've moved some cameras around. So I was able, I'm able to see the cameras that they have in Houston if I get in further, you know. So it allows you to see your buildings and then you can hyperlink into it. So it does require an outside connection, you know, for internet connection to be able to see that. And then you have your vents here if you have the vents there. You don't have to have the vents. And then you can also say, just show me the camera feeds. And the camera feeds will show up once you get in to a certain, on the zoom, on the, there. So like I said, they moved them. This isn't in Atlanta, but it's in Houston. My other mouse is much better than these Microsoft. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, let's see. What else? Am I missing something? Vape detection. Vape detection, we work with Halo. And, and that, so you can put the Halo device in, and that's a license, one license, you know, for that because it's a third party device, but we have full integration into that. And does that just trigger an alert like your other alerts? Yep, it can push them and push it. You can set up the rules. That's one thing about us is we have a rules manager. It is very customizable, very open. If you have an SDK, AI events, I can set up and I can do any, a lot of different things. So any type of event. So if I have access control event, if I have an org event, if I have analytics, right, camera analytics or the bait, uh, SDK, it's the metadata or one of those, the SDK import right there. So if we have a certain SDK, we can have that come in, we get that, we read it, and then, you, then what you do is you say, okay, so let's say we have an SDK input, say okay. You can do and or or, and then what action do you want? I want cameras to pop up, I want all this stuff, I want you to alert this certain user or whatever. So you have all that same here. So you know, like the door state, if it's door state changes, you know, we want that to pop up or shut the lock down, or we can email that AV, you know, the video clip. So the rule manager is very, very customizable for that for different applications that you want. Right. And the gunshot detection is in there too. <coughs> yeah, we do gunshot detection. That is through the cameras with a microphone. And so how we do that, we also do glass break detection. So that's all in the sound application. So in the sound, we do an audio like a loud yell or a horn. A vehicle horn will do glass break, gunshot, and a yell. So if the camera has a microphone we have, or is capable of taking an input, we have a microphone that we can screw into it. And then you're able to do these analytics if you want to have those analytics on there. So if you wanted gunshot detection, it would be boom at that camera. It's not gonna say, it's not gonna do pinpoint like gun, you know, where they triangulate and say, this is where the gun is. You're gonna get the alert and it's gonna be that, that camera or 
whatever, how many cameras pop up with that work. Do your cameras have microphones built in? Some do, yes. But all the out outdoor ones like this, they don't. So they have an input. You come in with a with our little input. I don't have this one took apart, but it's just a 3.5 millimeter. We just came out with a new microphone where it will screw into the, there's another ring that goes on here, and a, the microphone actually screws into the base plate. So it looks kind of nice. But if you had another microphone you wanted to put in this room here with the cameras over there, the mic in the middle of the room, you can do that too. So any type of audio, audio input into a comp. Okay. So those are all the sound attributes. That, that is under the AI VMD. That's the AI VMD stuff. So this, this feature right here. And that's all inside the camera. So that's all done inside the camera. So these are all live events that have happened just now, right? Intruders. And then it says new. This is under the event, live events. So this allows me to click and see the recorded event. So there's the event. It says it's viewed. And then if I want, there is another view that allows me to see my video. And I don't know why this is off. It's gotta be the resolution. But over here, I can actually see the, the um, live view. It'll allow me to go in and see what the live view is. So now I can click and I can see the live view of that instead of, so I can see it going on now, is that still going on? So if I come and I click on this event, there's the event, I see the event, and then I can also click and see, okay, is that, li that live, it's not there anymore. So we give you that feature of being able to see them both at the same time. And that's in the event scene. And then what I did on the, the same thing is if I had, registered vehicle or let's just say base. So anytime I have a watch list, so these are people that we've saved faces of. And if I say, okay, when Mr. Bill Brennan comes on the property, there's the, you know, Ken Costello, I guess that's his name. Put him in the watch list. You can put multiple watch lists in there. And then when they come, it can alert you there in this thing here or send it out to the app. So would they need an, the app on the mobile phone open at the time? To no. The alert or just no, you just turn on push notifications and it gets a... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in Houston, I log into theirs and they'll push on, push on notifications and because I use it for demo too, all of a sudden I get those notifications because as soon as they enable that push notification. Okay. So as soon as you enable your push <clears throat> notifications, you don't have to have the app open to get it. It's just like a text message coming okay. to you, but it's on the app. And then you log in and you can see what's. There was a question about how you calculate storage for the minimum of 10 days. Yep. Let me fix this screen again. <coughs> calculator here's his website ah. yeah you blocked me <laughs> anyway we have a calculator that you can actually it calculates <laughs> and it takes the bandwidth of that and then I always I never use motion detection because you can never people say well we're only doing 50% of motion I'm like okay well what's 50% of motion okay 50% of motion in this clip here is probably like very little, right? Because it's maybe used once or once a week or if that. So how do you calculate motion? So my best practice or our best practice is we do 10 frames a second, 724. And if you want 10 days, that's how we calculate. That's how I calculate it because then that gives you that buffer. If you record on motion, that's how I can always guarantee that you're gonna get your video and your 10 days. So that's how I calculate the motion. That, that's how we calculated this last one. 
And then, what, what was another one? Uh, does your system integrate with visitor management systems? Um, we did with Silver. What do you guys use again? I can't remember what you got there. Yeah. Right now we don't, but that's uh, that's something that we can look at of implementing that. That's that's it's on the it's on the roadmap to do. So. And then emergency alert systems as well. Any SDK input you want to put in, you can make that work. And, you know, any CGI you come in, come in. We can take that and then do. Redaction, we covered that. Redaction, yes, there's two ways. So we can do it after the effect, you know, where you export that video. And then do you guys do a lot of redaction? So our system that we currently have hasn't been capable of it until about a week ago. Um, but honestly, the biggest thing that we need to do is blur faces if we're gonna release the videos. Um, that's hard to do after because it can make it look like we've tampered with the video. And so I would love a solution that allows us to redact and still hand it off as evidence. And that, that way then- we, So are you redacting all the phases when you release it or just- Like, like think just, of the typical school scene where two kids fight, but everyone else is like a bystander. At that point, it becomes an education record because we're gonna discipline off of it. But it's really only about those two kids in the fight. And so everyone else, we need to protect their privacy so that when this gets shown on the wall of the courtroom. Yeah, they're not saying, well, that kid was that, you know, yeah. they can't identify other kids in them. So, yes, we have that. I just think it's how often you do it. It might be more effective to just do one offs to have a third party place do it. I mean, we can do it, it's just, you know, expensive. But we do have an AI, but it doesn't allow you to select the faces that you don't want to be unblurred. So we call it Privacy Guard. And we can put it on the second stream of the camera and you can record that at a lower frame or whatever, or even put it as a camera because you can do shared IP addresses and show that and then you can release that. But the thing is, is that's gonna blur everybody's face, but it's a Privacy Guard. And that's an AI, so it would blur everybody's face, just the face. You can okay. still see everything else, but yeah. that's an AI that's on the, that can be loaded on the camera too. Is that included or is that an extra cost? It's included, it's free. Hate that word. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's a free analytic that we load onto the camera and it's called Privacy Guard. And it would allow you to, every face, so like us all in here, all our faces would be blurred, but you would still see everything you wanted. Yeah. And then, you know, like if they were looking over a reception area, you can say, well, I also want to blur out computer screens. And it can blur that out too. Okay. And you say load onto the camera, so if we're bringing some of our what is it, hand on or whatever cameras yeah. to the party, no dice? Okay. No dice. Yeah, because this, this is strictly written around our platform and you know with our cameras because we do everything on the edge and much more effectively. I mean, I know how and what does some, and I don't know, I know that we're talking about bringing some of their analytics in I don't know if it's going to come in this way or a different way. But I know that's on the it's on the roadmap. I just don't know when. Okay. So as you know, because everybody's going to edge. Everybody's got AI on their cameras. You know, like the intruder, loitering, and all that stuff. Everybody's got it. And so we're starting to develop that and put them into the platform. So. Sure. And that, so. You may have touched on this a little, but the. Um they wanted to see how you follow subjects across multiple cameras. You pulled up a lot of them at one time. Is, is that? Yeah, so that's been in talks too, but that's a certain manufacturer that does that. But um, that's where I use the search. You know, I mean, the, the people search or the face, that's where I would follow, you know, we don't have that feature of saying this person went from this camera to this camera. We don't have that feature. It's come up in multiple discussions to do it and that um, it can be done with a lot of pressure. But yeah, so we don't do that. I mean, you can do it, you know, you can line your cameras up if you know and do playback and then follow them through there. But we don't have the little butt, magic button to push and say, go to the next camera, the next camera, you know, based on if that car went through this and went to that other camera, so. 
But that's where I just use the search because then it just pulls up that one person and then I can just, oh, here's the video that I, that I need. And it'll pull it up by time, so yeah, you can kind of do it yeah. um, in order there, but. Do you guys do video on your buses? Yeah. Okay. So that's, and you guys are using a third party company right now, or how are you guys doing that? Yeah. So, so there we go. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's bus, uh, different system. I don't know. REI. REI. Yeah. They're very experienced. Yeah. So, but anyway, you could also bring it into here. We have a <laughs> mobile platform that you can actually put a recorder on the bus and pull that, and then you can actually see the location of the bus, put all that stuff in. Uh, just so, so, just like RTD, I could, we could track and see where the buses are on that route, and you could see them. If you wanted to, if they had LTV on the bus, you could dive in and get it. But what's cool is I can come in and I can put in. If there's an event like the bus driver, there's a fight. They hit a button. It says tags this video. As soon as the bus comes into the depot, it automatically uploads that event and then puts it into a cache and says, "Okay, here's." The or as you guys have an event, I know bus 101. I can come in and I can go, okay, bus 101, I want this event, but basically it's under the modules. So, but that's where you'd come in and set, and set it up and you'd say add, and you say which bus do you want? Do you want all the cameras, a single camera? So you can do that too. So we have that, that feature. In and there. Would that work with the existing systems or is that? We could work with the existing cameras, but it would still have to, we'd put a, it's basically a version of Video Insight on the bus. Okay. That like way. a little DVR thing mm -hmm. or something. Yes. Yep. yep. Yeah, it's a little mobile box that is made to be sent on the you know, for, for that application. So when I export the video, as you saw that I did some video exportation, I'm just going to select here. So when instead of doing the whole screen if i'm just doing a camera or i can do multiple cameras i can come through and swap there like i said so in this one we have the executable file this is what i like about the executable file is when i export it it's going to make it play through our viewer okay and then you can assign a password to that so nobody can get it so if you're sharing video clips in a shared folder and somebody gets in there and they look at all these you know but if you assign a password to it, nobody can open it without the password. So we can export that that way. Uh, one thing that we can also do that I like to do here is select. I don't know if I showed this last time, but I can select. This is the only, so this is, I guess this could be the redaction if you wanted to. Let's say they're all fought, fighting within a circle and you could just redact. I don't care about all the kids out here and the fight was right here. You could just do that and it would never show any of that. So I guess. Would it be blurred out or is it just. No, normal? it cut, all I'm gonna show. I'll it's show basically you. like a zoom or whatever and you It's not even a zoom, so that's okay. that's what I'm only gonna export. How long am I exporting here? I don't wanna do. I only wanna do a minute just for. So I'm gonna export just this and what I'm gonna export is just what I, drew a box around and what I mean by that so like this right here is another one of those same thing that I did so that's my whole view but this is the only thing I clipped and it's not digitally zoomed it is on here because it's so big and then there's our watermark right there and then the time and date if you put in yeah, the time and the dates right down here so it's not putting it on the image so you're not getting, you know, some people have it up here. I don't like it because it, sometimes something happens up there. So, and then here's the executable one where it boots up the player and it's, it's the encryption, it's all that stuff. So if it's there and then this is what will play on any player. You know, this is an AVI, it'll all play on there. And then through our player, you can also drop any AVI in there and play it too. And then. I can also clip from that also. So if I want to clip a clip of a clip, I can do that. So it's just like my, so I can come down here and I can clip this video. So yeah, so here's the, you saw my bookmark, right? Well, I thought it was kind of cool. This person got pulled by his dog. Yank. Yeah. 
Yeah, so now if I wanted to clip that, I could clip that, just that area again. I just select that and export that. So I can actually clip a clip. So you could export the whole video and then you could just draw your box around that. Can somebody do that if I show, if I showed that clip with them, they could if they only needed a certain port of mm -hmm. that they could whoever has them. rights to do export and if they have the player, yes. Right. But as an executable then that can only be shared with people with PCs, right? I mean so we could export the ABI and send that over, you know, that's that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well and even here this one. So like this ABI here, this is our But yeah, so you could clip it on, on there, even if they have a Mac, because they could do, you know, ABI. This this will work on Mac, I guess. It's supposed to work on Mac for also. So if I have, so like this 360 is a clip that I, it's an ABI, I just drag it into here and I can play it. So I can have multiple video clips here and I can watch them as they come through also. Then they go to C's. Okay. Um, one thing that we're really unique is, you know, the fish eyes, these right here. Right? I can't remember if I showed this to you guys last time. But anyway, so this is very unique to our platform. Everybody can do the quadrant thing, right? Where they can quad it out. Do, do the four, four view, right? And it's better to show on there. But let me go here, I'll show you what I mean. Do you guys like the 360s or do you try to stay away from 360s? We've got several. Okay. They're, they're great for stairwells and yeah. you know, things like that. They're yeah, and they're great everywhere coverage, intersection, four way intersections yep. and that. So what's, what's unique with us in the platform here with our camera is, you know, you can do this, right? You can move each one of these however you want. You know, everybody can do this. They can double de-warp it, you know. But what we do is I'm gonna double click and PC is working. If you can hear it spinning over here. <laughs> We're still downloading that stuff. <laughs> but I can also do that in playback too, so. change something on me. There we go. There we go. Somebody went in to change the mounting. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have the mounting right, like ceiling wall, that one that they must have changed it to a wall mount. But all I did was double click and it advanced to warps it. And then I can zoom in, zoom out, I can move it, and then double click again and it goes back and then I can spin this anywhere we want. So that is very unique with our, our 360s and our platform. So we don't do that with anybody else's 360s, unfortunately. Is that really you your can, computer? Huh? Is that really your computer? Yeah. It's making that noise? Uh -huh. You need to get a new one. This <laughs> is like his third new one. It's brand new. Yeah, it's the fan. It's getting warm. The Surface Pro? Yep. Uh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So I can do that in live and play back too. I can do that de-warping and clipping and all that stuff there. So let's see. Did we cover everything on your thing? So live view, view, word faces, all sort. Yes, we can do that. I don't have a demo of that, but yes, we do have it. It's called Privacy Guard. Um, then 
all of our analytics is on our, our global site, so you can go to our global site and you can actually see all of our technologies on our, our website. What is it? Products, intelligent analytics. So the Active Guard, the, we can also do occupancy, 360, the sound classification, the non mask, people. There's the privacy guard one. So that just blurs out those faces and kind of a But so the privacy guard, all the analytics, you can actually just download them right there and then plug them, put them into the camera. So, and then like it says, we have a tool, it's called Easy IT, it's the um, what is it? ICT tool. So this is a tool that we can actually push the program and do everything you want to do to it. That tool allows you to load the AI on it. It also allows you to do firmware updates. It'll it'll select, it'll do a search on there. You can do firmware updates automatically. It'll go out and grab the camera and then say, "This needs an update. Do you want to update?" And it'll allow you to do that update and everything. And then everything that you can do inside the camera, you can do on that tool. The only thing you can't set up is your motion detection zones. If you want to do any of that stuff, that's where you would use the VI to go in and set up your AI, you know, your analytical stuff in that. Getting away from motion detection, we're moving more towards AI because, I, you know, if a tree's moving and if I'm using motion detection, anytime that tree moves, you try to draw your box around it, or if a bag blows through it or a bird blows through it, you're getting a you're getting an event. With the AI, you can say I only want to know when there's a human here, and you know you could do the whole image and the tree could be moving and it's not going to record it. You can record on that event, so saves on that aspect of it. I think that's it. What does training look like for both end users and our technical stuff? So, oh yeah, tech support. You guys can call into tech support. They can dial in and help you there. We have modular based, um, where you have a modular of training where you can go and go through that. And then we also have a gentleman, which I like Joey best. I can bring Joey out uh, for a three day training. And that can be certified if you want get certified or just you know end user training and that and that's roughly around 1500 bucks or something like that so in that area so we can do that way the modular we have some free modulars on there and then we have a full course of everything that, that we can set you guys up and that's accessible so once you get it you get access you get a whole year for that that training modulars and assets to it so yeah, can we call tech support if we're not trained? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay. Good. We're here for the end users. I mean, we're here for the dealers too, but more for the end users. You know, because you can't get a hold of the dealer, you need that support now. And we've got, like we explained, we have 724. It's tech support. After hours is, is a skeleton crew, but yes, we have that. So if something happens, we can get in. And okay. And if we do the install, we'll do knowledge transfer, uh, you know, with your team and everything at each site and stuff, so they're comfortable with it. Okay. Yeah, so see, I clipped that video, so that's the only thing I got. <laughs> that's a big dog. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> There's two other dogs over there. <laughs> there <you go. laughs> But that's how you could do that clip too. You could just say, well, here's this armor training. The kid's fighting, and then you get rid of everybody out of it. It's not redaction, but it's a way around it. But sure. But like it says, we have the privacy guard thing that you can also get, use and do it that way. We have other school districts that just pull it into, you know, uh, Microsoft Suite or VI Suite or what am I, what am I thinking? Photoshop. 
like if they have to send it to the um, to the news or something, they'll just Photoshop them out um, for their faces. Who are you using here? Though? Who's using? You guys heard? Uh, you said public school. Oh Which, yeah, that we one. Have Denver, that, we have. That one was twenty seven K that I was talking about. Okay. Yeah, I mean they don't do a lot of redaction, but if they do, they'll just third party it out and have them redacted. Yeah. Because it's just, it's like okay, why use this piece of software and I spend a lot of money for it and I maybe use it once or twice a year. I think your PDs all have that software. Um, for like we're a really small town so <laughs> true. true we have we have it also through our body worn camera stuff too they have redaction software through where they can go in and click and do it when we have it it just like i said it's if you want it's a separate server so you export the avi you bring the avi in then you select which faces you want for that to do that stuff on there so i'm guessing rgb has to do that kind of thing when they're doing um, I don't know. Yeah. I've never, I don't live in Denver, so I don't know if they... I feel like you can always see their faces when they're yeah. on the news. <laughs> I, don't feel like I go, if you're in the public space, I mean, kids, it's a privacy thing. It's a it's a law, whatever that law for, for schools. Schools are different. RGD, you're in a public space, so you're, it doesn't matter. So you're, you're on video. It's just like going to Britain, you know, over there. You're always on there. So like our document trading base, we have a whole bunch of it. So all of our cameras are listed here. And this is where the firmware is. We have specs, so we can help on that stuff. We have it all for the software too, technologies, all that stuff is all in here. I was trying to find the privacy group thing, but can't find it. But I feel like I pulled it off of the US site last time. At home, I got the big white screen, so all my things fit across it. So I know where they are. That's a lot of bookmarks. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of bookmarks. That's all I have to do with all That's the one that's going to Anyway, that's pretty much it. And I don't have anything else unless there's a question or anything on that side. I guess I could have powered up a, a camera and showed you on the inside of the cameras, but it's really the same thing as there. It's just there, and then, like I said, the plugins are already plug loaded. It comes with people and vehicle as default on the cameras with AI VOD. So. Question: You rose your hand. I saw. No, you're scratching my my elbow. Stretching. <laughs> <laughs> what about with that camera? I you had a screen where you could show all of those four pieces kind of mm -hmm. stitched together or uh, it's not stitched but yeah um, so like the views this right here so that's that camera on the building there are four individual cameras and in there and then we just came out with the new camera where we have a multi-sensor with an integrated ptc and so it's five megapixel four or three lens with a ptc underneath it um, and then we also have the dual sensor camera that those and those can go up to 4k on those and those are ai or non-ai so we have both so if you don't want ai you can buy the, the u series which is basically just a camera so you know if you want to get down and dirty but i for the cost difference from there to to the ai cameras it's not that big and plus it saves you a ton of time on searching and all that stuff do you know the PoE power requirements for each of the cameras? Mm -hmm. So PoE plus PoE, um, the PO, the PTZs are PoE plus. Okay. Uh, the new one that just came out is PoE plus plus 60 watts, but we include the, or I think we do, I don't know if we do, but uh, an injector for those. Um, but mainly everything runs on PoE, PoE plus. Okay. And so. She's got some catalogs yeah. here. I have some catalogs. So at the bottom, it'll show you, it gives you the basic specs at the bottom. It'll show you each 
It needs what healing. Power, yeah, what's so the power requirement? So like that are. one's probably like seven seven watts. Okay. And that one probably pulls close to thirty, probably like twenty something watts. So I'm just throwing numbers off the top of my head, but I know that the domes are very low. A lot of them don't pull a lot. That's what we've always proud ourselves, and that's why our product lasts so long because we're not running them to the extreme for power. And Panasonic designed that back in the day because you know what kills electronics. You know. Besides water and all that stuff, heat. But, you know that's what's killing this. <laughs> so, so heat. So you know when you're putting a lot of power to it, that produces a lot of heat. So the cameras. So they figured it out to be able to use as low as power as they need to, so it doesn't generate a lot of heat. To and that's why we get a lot of longevity. Plus, our outside, there's a lot of technology behind all this stuff. A lot of our other cameras. They this one isn't because this is a this is a U series camera. No, this is a, we have a dehumidification device inside. So, you know, you guys never get that where you drop to minus 20. And then all of a sudden in the, in the summer, not in the summer, but by noon, it's really hot. So the domes will fog up sometimes, you know. So that dehumidification device inside this takes care of all that stuff for outdoor cameras. Okay, so. Not a big problem. Not a, not a big problem in Colorado, but. No. It happens. It happens in Utah too. 40, 50 degree swings. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so here's our training course. Um, we do have free ones on there for end users, but they're very basic if you want to get into more. The basic install stuff and, and um, configuration questions. That, but if you call tech support, like if you're really having a problem, Tech support can kind of like triage that for you, and then they'll send you the video if you wanted to. Um, yeah, so we we can get you into these, so like active guards, high post certified chain, all that kind of stuff. We've got tons of other training, so I think the basics. So we have all the basics, the tools, how to set up the the stuff in the cameras. Uh, this is all video inside, so it's an introduction. So the ones that say free are the ones that are available. You don't have to have a login. It makes me log in every time I try to get into it. So, so the ones that say free are, are end user ones. So I didn't even know that. They just put up the dual sensor. So they try to go through and cover everything for end users to be able to get into it. There's a lot more free stuff than I thought. Yeah. I used to only have like a few. So. And this is always updating all the time, so. So that's, like I said, this is all available to you guys. Um, and that's what Jamie's here also, myself, I don't care for it too, so. Did I cover everything? Besides jumping into a camera and show you how to load the analytic? No, I think I think so. I think we had you know was, you let us ask questions while you're going, so I think yeah. we covered the stuff that I was thinking about anyway. So yeah, cool. Well, I'm good. I am done. Unless you want to add something. No, like this. Thank you for the opportunity to share this with you. If there's anything you need, we can do installations for you guys. We can do some training. We, you know, uh, Ed, Ed was out here the last time he was here. Our uh, partner that we work with for that. So. Great. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. So, like I said, we can use your existing stuff to bring it all sure. into the one. And again, you know, we're talking about with these with these two schools, the, the RFI was done for. They're brand new, so you know, it would be would be able to to kind of cherry.